Hello and welcome to my lecture for Philosophy 4400 on the multiverse. This is going to be about Max Tegmark's article, Parallel Universes for Scientific American. The multiverse theory holds that there is a large number, probably an infinite number, of parallel universes. Now initially you might wonder if this is a contradictory thesis, because you might think that a universe just refers to the sum total of everything that exists, in which case there could, by definition, only be one of them. But in this context, we're not using universe that way, of course. In this context, a universe is something like this. Uh, it's a large collection of stuff that is, all of the stuff is spatially temporally connected to each other, that is at some distance from each other in the same space time, and causally isolated from the stuff in the other, quote, universes. Max Tegmark is a famous cosmologist who advocates for this theory, and there are several other physicists and cosmologists who also believe in this. Now in his article on parallel universes, Tegmark introduces what he calls four levels of multiverse. These are sort of different versions of how there could be parallel universes. The level one multiverse is a collection of parallel universes that are simply very far away from each other, but they're in the same space time. They would have different initial conditions. If they all had a big bang, there would be different initial conditions at the big bang, but they would have the same laws of nature and the same values for the parameters and the laws of nature. These other universes would count as our universes just because they're so far away that we can't see them. Now, why would you think that this might be true? As Tegmark says, it's plausible that space is infinite. And if space is infinite, then it would be kind of weird that there would only be matter in this one region of space, and then just an infinite distance going on forever and ever with nothing at all. Rather, it would be at least somewhat more plausible that there would just be an infinite amount of matter stretching out forever as well. These are some implications that Tegmark draws out from this possibility. So if there is this kind of level one multiverse, then if you go out far enough, then it's likely that you would find, well, anything that's physically possible. For example, it's likely that you would find another physical duplicate of yourself. This would be a person who would be indistinguishable from you by a normal observer. Uh, with only the difference that they're in a different part of space-time. Tegmark says it's likely that there actually is such a person, a doppelganger of you, within 10 to the 10 to the 28 meters of here. Now, of course, that is an incomprehensibly far distance, but in principle, if you go far enough, you should be able to find copies of yourself and copies of basically anything else that exists. He says that it's likely that there is a duplicate universe, that is, an entire collection of galaxies that look just like ours, that would be indistinguishable from our universe um, to a human observer, within a distance of 10 to the 10 to the 118 meters of here. Uh, you might wonder why you should believe this. This does seem somewhat incredible, but basically anything with a non-zero probability is going to happen sometimes, given enough opportunities. This state of the universe, the state that our current universe is actually in, obviously, has a non-zero probability of occurring. So therefore, if you go out far enough, there should be other times when it has occurred. You just need to look at enough universes and eventually there will be one that looks just like this, another one that looks just like this. And in fact, actually, there are infinitely many universes that look just like this because after you find the first duplicate, you can then go you know, another 10 to the 10 to the 118 meters and you'll probably find another one and so on forever. Okay, the level two multiverse is similar to the level one, except that the parallel universes are even farther away. So Tegmark hypothesizes that there could be a collection of level one multiverses, and that collection is the level two multiverse. Now these uh, other parallel universes in the level two multiverse would be so far away that it would actually be impossible to ever reach them, even if you traveled at the speed of light forever. 
Now, this might seem not to make sense, but basically the reason for this is that uh, it's thought in cosmology that space is expanding everywhere. And so the space in between two of these parallel universes might actually be expanding fast enough that uh, the distance between the two universes is increasing faster than the speed of light. And so it doesn't matter how fast you go or how long you go, you can never reach the other parallel universe. Uh, these other parallel universes could have not only different initial conditions from our universes, but they could even have different values of the parameters in the laws of nature. For example, there could be a different gravitational constant. Uh, or the charge on an electron could be a different amount, and so on. Tegmark even suggests that uh, some of these other parallel universes could have different space-time geometry. There could be a different number of dimensions in their space and things like that. What about the level three multiverse? The level three multiverse is basically the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, which we discussed in a previous lecture. So instead of postulating wave function collapses, this theory would posit that when a measurement is done, the universe splits into different branches, different sub-universes, if you will, such that there is one branch in which each of the possible measurement outcomes occurs. Now, in his article, Tegmark suggests that the splitting would occur when people make decisions, and I'm not clear on why he says that. I think he should say it occurs when people make observations or they do a measurement on a physical system that's in a superposition for the property that's being measured. These different branches would all have the same laws of nature. They would also have the same past. That is, when a branching occurs, the two sub-universes, or however many universes appear, they all have the same past, and they ju they'll just have different futures. And they'll have the same laws and the same values for the um, parameters in the laws of nature. Finally, there's the level four multiverse. And this is where Tegmark hypothesizes that maybe every mathematical possibility is physically realized in some universe. Now notice that the previous multiverses all had a kind of common physics framework. Even if they had different values for the constants in the laws of nature, in the previous three levels of multiverse, uh, all of the parallel universes would have the same underlying laws. Namely, they would all have general relativity and quantum mechanics governing them. In the level four multiverse, you hypothesize that the different parallel universes don't even have to have the same laws. They don't have to have quantum mechanics or general relativity. Rather, every possible set of physical laws would be realized in some parallel universe or other. Okay, why does Tegmark think this? He says a couple of things in the article. Uh, one thing he says is he points out how mathematics is surprisingly useful in describing physical reality. And then he also points out that uh, Plato argued that mathematical reality is fundamental. He contrasts Plato's view with Aristotle's, where Aristotle thought that concrete physical reality was fundamental and um, mathematics was dependent upon it, but Plato thought that mathematics had independent existence. Now, my own comment is I think he's kind of gone off the deep end at, at this point, and I think these arguments don't actually support the, multi, the level four multiverse. Uh, the fact that mathematics is surprisingly useful in describing physical reality doesn't require that all mathematical possibilities are realized. It just requires that only mathematical possibilities are realized, right? In other words, only the things that are consistent with some mathematical system are realized. That doesn't mean everything that's consistent with a mathematical system is realized. Um, also, when Plato said that fundamental uh, that mathematical reality was fundamental and exists independent of physical reality, you know, he certainly didn't think that, and Platonists today don't think that uh, every abstract object is physically realized by some particular concrete entity, right? They just think that these abstract objects exist as abstract objects, right? In their, in their own completely abstract way, not in concrete reality. 
Now these are some objections that Tegmark discusses. So the first thing that people would probably think of when they hear about this multiverse is it violates Occam's razor, which tells us that you know other things being equal, the simplest explanation is most likely to be correct or something like that. The multiverse appears to be wasteful and appears to violate this principle in about the starkest way that you could imagine. Now his reply to this is actually having a large collection of things can be simpler than having only one element of it. So uh, for example, if you have a program that generates all the natural numbers, that could be a much simpler algorithm than a program that writes just one large number, right? Because there's a simple rule that you can follow. And if you want to select out just one number and exclude a bunch of other ones, then you might have to write more complicated rules. And so similarly, the set of all solutions to the equations of general relativity is simpler to specify than a single solution. And so it could be that the multiverse theory is actually in a certain sense simpler than a theory which only has one universe. That is simpler in the sense that the statement describing what exists could be simpler. Here's the second major objection that people would think of. A lot of people just think the multiverse is very weird and find it hard to accept for that reason. Tegmark's reply is, first of all, you know, this is an aesthetic objection, not a scientific objection. I mean, what is weirdness? When you say that something is weird, you're just sort of like expressing your own emotional or aesthetic reaction to the thing. And that's not really evidence about what could exist objectively in reality. He also argues that you should expect fundamental reality to seem weird to us. And the reason is that our brains didn't really evolve for thinking about this kind of thing. Our brains evolved for thinking about concrete objects in our immediate environment that are relevant to our survival and reproduction, right? If you think in terms of evolutionary psychology. So you should expect that when you think about things that are very far from the sorts of things that evolution designed us to know about, those things are going to strike us as weird. And so he thinks it's not really a very strong objection to the multiverse theory that it strikes us as very bizarre. So in conclusion, there may well be many parallel universes, and there are serious theories in cosmology that postulate that but uh, probably not as many parallel universes as Max Tegmark thinks there are.